Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching episode 144 of Let's Plant. And in this episode, there's a few things that I would like to update you with. The first of which is that it is now near the end of spring. Summer is really close with just a couple weeks between spring and summer now. This means that the days are really long. Our sunsets happen at 8.30 p.m. And apart from that, the days have started to become really hot. Earlier this week, we had two days where the temperatures were over 40 degrees. It caused some bushfires all across the region of Victoria. Luckily, our area is safe, but our thoughts and prayers for those affected because there was, there was a lot of power outages. Because back then, the winds were really strong, so any uh, there's a lot of branches falling down, lots of trees, and this would affect power lines, and we'd, we wouldn't want that to happen. My other announcement is that one of my colleagues at work is organizing a craft market. We would be bringing our handmade stuff, so stuff that are not commercial, and this got me thinking that I could definitely sell succulents during that event. So this episode is mainly about preparing my stock for that craft market, which also means that I would be able to work on my inventory for my shop. So today, we will be having a look at my plants. When filming my episodes, I usually forget to do a close-up of whatever I'm talking about and I do have a second camera. I usually bring this out for setup shots or for alternative angles when we need a really low angle. I usually pair this with my gorilla pod or you know the little tripod thingy with stretchy, no, bendy legs. But for most of the angles that I usually shoot with the gorilla pod doesn't really help because it's really short. So I decided to get myself another tripod i just purchased this off of facebook marketplace thank you so much uh, it was really cheap it, this is a used item definitely this is by no means a top of the line item this is i think uh, this was released well less than a decade ago but within the past five or so years and i still think it's good and for my purposes this is just a backup tripod for my other camera this is perfect and I only paid $50 for this. I think brand new this would be over 100 so yeah, really worth it. Just going to set it up and attach it to my camera now. Luckily, this is an easy setup. You just have to insert the base plate, then lock. Yep, all good. So yeah, let's have a look at my plants. So here are my propagation shelves on this top level here are mostly things that I plan to sell and there's a whole lot of plants in here now I'm going to give you a sneak peek on what it looks like let me just set up this camera so here is where we are at so far as you can see there's lots of tiny echeveria some graptoveria pachyphytum pachyveria all sorts of stuff basically echeverias and their hybrids stuff that I would normally collect so, you know, definitely these are something that I really like. While on this right side, these are plants that are in my personal collection and plants that are trying to recover. So, top shelf on the right side, my personal collection. Second shelf, recovery. Third shelf, hybrids. And yeah, as you can see, I've got a whole lot of trays and pots and planters containing small plants here. Bubbles. Minutes of blowing bubbles later. So here are my plants. They are directly exposed to the sun. There's no cover on top of them. I intend to add a bit of cover, like very much the same way as I have right here, because it is now, well, it's getting pretty close to summer. And the more that we are getting high degree temperatures above 35 or so, the more this would be prone to heat prone to sunburns and I wouldn't want that to happen. So what I'll be doing is to chop this shade cloth that I have right here. It's pretty long as you can see. It's draping over the entire shelf going all the way here. So there's a bit of slack to it. I'll just chop it in half, place one half on top of this other shelf here and we'll be good to go. So my plans for the craft market are to bring a whole lot of plants, probably maybe this entire shelf. But that means that it would eat into my stock for my plant shop, which I would be offering online. 
So I think a good idea would be to go around in the garden, pick up a whole lot of pops or maybe even start a new bunch, a new batch of propagations that way. If I manage to sell out all of these, I will still have another batch waiting in the wings, ready for my, uh, my push towards the end of summer. So yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. As far as propagation is concerned, we will be doing the usual stuff such as harvesting pups. So this Echeveria curls right here, it has a whole lot of pups around the main plant. And I have a lot of clumps like these, which I would like to separate, you know, get each of the heads here and place them in their own planter or in their own pot. I would also like to grab a lot of chops or cuttings from some of my clumps here. And I think that would be a good idea because this part of the garden is overrun right now. I haven't been doing much here and I plan to do a bit of work here after summer once it gets a bit warmer no once once it gets a bit cooler because if i do anything now then the plants that are newly chopped or not yet established would be burning under the hot sun under hot summer and that's something that i would not like to happen so as far as re-landscaping those that usually happens towards autumn but enough to talk let's start harvesting pops and yeah so first up is this echeveria curls as you can see it has a large rosette in the middle but a whole lot of pops surrounding it. Ooh, you want to wear your shoes? Mm. Yeah. Time out. Okay. Yay. Play. Bye. So, where was I? Yeah, the curls. There's a bunch of pops surrounding the main plant. And I need to separate them now because if these things continue growing during the growing season then they would be pushing against the main plant and they would be misshapen because they do not have enough space to grow into. So we need to give them the space and the best way to do that is to plant them separately or give them a new space to grow into. Pulling this out would be tricky so the way I usually do this is I place my, my fingers underneath the plant, look for the base. So I don't know how to illustrate this. Let's say we have this plant. What I'm mostly doing is getting my fingers around the base of the rosette somewhere here and just push, push the stem out. That way it would detach from the main stem. So if we apply that same principle here, I'm just wrapping my fingers around the stem of this pup and I'm pushing, pushing against the stem. Hopefully that dislodges it from the main plant, but if not, I'll have to apply a bit more force. If you can't do it with one pop, you could always try with the others. Basically need a space to work in. So you can use the other pop as leverage here. I managed to remove one of them. This means that I have more space to work on this other pup it would be a lot easier to push it to the side now so two pups out i think there's still one more i have space for this pup to go to move into so i can just push it out and we're done three pups out and i just need to replant this in their own pots, let them stabilize for a bit. Because right now they are misshapen, they are not upright and they are not regular. So a little bit of fixing is necessary. And by fixing, I mean letting them grow with the correct conditions, you know, with the sun directly overhead. I'm just going to remove the remaining dead leaves because this plant definitely needs airflow. And I'm just checking to see if there's still other pups underneath. I don't see any. So, yeah, I think we're good now. I see some snails, so I'm removing them as well. Because these things do damage on the plant. So here's the snail. As you can see, it's, pret it's pretending to be dead by pushing out all of these bubbles. Yeah. With the main plant now clean, this means that this plant has a lot of room to grow. And hopefully this would accelerate its growth. And this also gives me a clear view of the plant, which allows me to place some fertilizer around it and I'll be doing that later. 
Having done the curls, I just have to go around the garden and look for plants that have pups growing around the main plant, like this one, and harvest all of them. So this will take a bit of time and I'll be back. The problem with having a multi-camera setup is that I tend to forget which camera has the mic activated. In this case, I had the wrong one on. So I thought I should give myself half an hour to harvest plants and this is what I got. I only went for it for half an hour since I figured I need more time to film the rest of the parts of this video. And yeah, but in any case, I already harvested a whole lot of different types of pups from different types of plants. And let's just go through them. So on this tray, this is the, well, it contains mainly my agavoides, my agavoides plants. This is definitely a red edge, as you can see. And right next to it is a Benimusume, Reynolds Blue. I think that's what it was called. But I'll have to verify this afterwards because I didn't write it down yet. And so after those three, I've gotten a whole lot of plants, a whole lot of pups from the Agavoides. Well, this is an Agavoides hybrid called Gaia. So it's not, it's not a pure Agavoides. So the correct name would be Echeveria Gaia, not Echeveria Agavoides Gaia. Locally, I see them being labeled as Agavoides Gaia Pink and Gaia... Yeah, Gaia and Gaia Pink. They're basically the same plant, it's just that during winter and during the stress seasons, they change colors and you know that gives rise to the name. And behind those are these Echeveria Mira. I've gotten a couple of large pops from it. But I think I have a whole lot of other smaller pups that I already harvested a while back. So this will be adding to it. And of course, as you saw earlier, these are some of my Echeveria curls. And these ones I think are classic favorites because a lot of people are, even those who are new to Echeveria, they really appreciate the look of the curls. So as you can see right now, they are, they are a bit misshapen, a bit flat because they have been underneath the larger Echeveria curls, something like this they have been squeezing through the pot so I need to give them a bit of time to grow upwards to grow properly that way they would spread properly and be more regularly shaped filling up the rest of the tray would be this Agavoides Lemaire so there's a whole lot of them here and this large one right here which I'm holding right now containing a lot of pups of its own I'm still trying to decide whether I should sell this on its own because this is one 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 whole plant I guess I could use this as a, a display in a stand I don't know we'll see and now on this other tray we have a, well there's still some agavoides here but a whole lot of different types of plants as well so again very near to me these are the red edge also known as lipstick in yeah most most nurseries most shops would label this as lipstick but the correct, correct name would be agavoides red edge Here's a bunch more of the, yeah, those are definitely not Lazarus because this is the correct Lazarus. I think I harvested one, two, three, four, five, six, six of the Lazarus, six pups. And they're definitely, they're still showing up, showing off their uh, warm colors. They're, no, not the warm colors, their stress colors. This is from early winter. But as you can see with the other plants, with the smaller ones, which are not getting as much light. It is more blue, green compared to this one, which was more exposed during winter and summer, winter and spring. So we're going to ex expect this one to turn more into something like this in terms of colors over the next few weeks. And right here we have a, a couple of cloudburst. So this is an Echever cloudburst. They tend to be blue with red margins, as you can see here. Right now, their farina looks to be quite disturbed because they have been planted somewhere out in the open where birds have easy access to this. So there's a lot of marks, a lot of dirt on top of them. Hopefully in time, they would be cleaned up, you know, when I separate them and place them in smaller pots away from the birds. So we'll see. And right here, I have something labeled Reynolds Blue. So I think the ones that I picked up earlier are also Reynolds Blue because they look quite alike. So I'm going to place them in one pile just so I don't confuse myself. So here's what it looks like. Up next are these 
Echeveria Blood Maria. This is an Agavoyes hybrid with what? I'm not sure. Like the, like the curls, this one is looking really flat because it has been growing underneath the parent plant. There's a whole lot of them here. I don't think I'm going to count them all because man, it's more than a handful. And this one's the very striking ones. These are Echeveria colorata linceana or Echeveria colorata forma colorata. This is what they look like and some of them have flower stalks on top of them. I'm going to remove this now because it's going to be pretty warm and the insects are going to be active and I do not want this to be attracting insects. I'm just going to break it off. So here you go, this is the colorata linceana. And next to the linceana are a whole lot of Echeveria martin. This is another Agavoides hybrid. And as you can see, a lot of them are, well, I wouldn't say crested because they have their own stems, but a lot of these are growing very compact and showing a bit of monstrous growth. So uh, I'm not sure if I would want to sell them individually or maybe have some of them, you know, in a small clump like this. Because I, I think I rather like the look of the clump. It's pretty interesting. I'll have to split some of these clumps up while maybe the largest one will be kept as this big clump and I'll set a special price for this. So yep, these are the Martin. This one's, I picked this one from my Echeveria Powder Blue. So this is a hybrid based on the Kante. And finally this one, this is the largest pup that I picked up from my Echeveria Easter Bonnet. It is a Gibiflora hybrid. Unfortunately, the rest of the pups that's on the plant itself are still quite young, really tiny. I don't think it's time to pull them out yet, so just this one. I'll have more of these for sale probably towards the end of winter. No, probably towards the end of summer. Yeah. And now let's move on. The next thing that I would like to do is to deal with plants like these. So as you can see, this one is very leggy and yeah, it's bending so much from its weight. And the only way to salvage this is to give it a head chop, reset the plant. Hopefully new pups would grow along the stem, the stump. In preparation, I need to make sure that I have a clean cutting implement. And in this case, it's going to be this knife. It's a bit dirty right now, so I'll be spraying some uh, alcohol on it. This is a 100% isopropyl alcohol, which I got from Bunnings. I don't think... I'm not sure where else you can find it, but these are being sold as cleaning agents here. 100%. This is not something that you would rub on your skin. So yeah, I'm just going to spray it on top. Hopefully that disinfects the whole thing. And wipe it down. Let me just grab a piece of cloth or a paper towel. So I have to make sure that it is really clean. That way, the stump would not get infected. Because last time I did this, I didn't clean it properly. And some of the stems, one of the stumps that I prepared ended up rotting. I'll do it once more just to be sure it's really clean. So my goal is to have this grow. Well, to produce more pups. And just for those who are curious, this is an Echeveria uh, pompous. Yes, this is the pompous. And I need, no, this is not a pompous, this is the Etna. And the stem is too long now, too long and droopy. And I need to save this now. So I'm just going to chop high enough, high enough that it's still in the, the green area on the stem. But not too high because I want to be able to have a, a specimen plant still. If I chop too high, that means that I'll be chopping into most of the, the leaves of the main plant. And that would leave me with a small plant and that would be a shame. So, yeah, try to leave as much as possible, but stay within the green zone. There. So here's the chop. Hopefully it's clean enough, but since this is outdoors, I'm going to place this under the shade, under the eaves for now because I do not want any unnecessary, um, unnecessary infection to happen here. So 
you know, stuff like bird poop or, or something similar. <laughs> so yeah, this is going into the shade. I'm going to chop a few more plants and I'll be back. Oh, one more thing. I have to make sure that I label this stump correctly because a few months from now, I'll definitely forget which one this was. Yeah, labeling is really important. After doing all of these chops, it is very important to label all of these plants because as you can see, all of them are Gibiflora hybrids, 3D plants with caruncles. And it would be very difficult to tell them apart if you're just looking at stumps. <laughs> the heads themselves, they would start to look quite similar while they are recovering. They would start differentiating again once they grow even older. So, well, in my case, I'm going to do my best to keep these things together, the stump and the head that would make it easier for me to recognize which head goes to which stump. So now I'll be writing their names onto these little signs, plant labels, and hopefully I do not lose them. So this one is the Mona Loa. Next one would be, I believe this would be, this is the Pompus. Then that would be Etna, or do I have them the wrong way around? Yeah, this is Etna, definitely. Etna. If that's Etna, this is Curls. Then this would be Pompus. Barbillion or Barbellion, I'm not sure. And finally, that one at the far right would be Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Hopefully, I do not lose any of the labels and we'll see what happens few months from now. I am expecting lots of pops to come out of, out of these stumps by, by autumn and hopefully even a lot more sales. <laughs> if you were wondering about the heads, right now I just have them in, in empty pots just to keep them dry because I'm going to make sure that they callus over first before I plant them out and start watering them. I would estimate that it's their growing season so this would probably happen yeah, I think a couple of weeks from now would be enough because from memory in spring, no, in autumn before when I tried, it took about four weeks before they started pushing out roots. But that was during the, the tail end of autumn where it was starting to get cold. So now that it's getting pretty warm, I think the speed would be twice of that. So two weeks minimum, I think that works. But the good thing about having them in empty pots just drying out like this is it would be a lot easier you know to just flip the plant over and see if it has roots as opposed to planting them in right away now so yeah i would need to be well i'll be leaving them alone for a week and starting next week that's when i would start um, monitoring just seeing for any signs of roots and once that happens i'm going to plant them somewhere semi semi protected maybe in my propagation station something that i've been thinking about is that it's unlikely that a lot of the potential buyers would be actual collectors themselves some of them would be probably casual collectors or you know someone interested in the idea of collecting succulents but are not yet deep into the collection phase their price range or their threshold is still quite low so i think that i would need to be able to cater to that price market. I need to make sure that I have plants under $5, maybe $3, 2 to $3. I need to bring along plants that are easily propagated such as this elegance and maybe the chalk sticks, the jelly beans, uh, my imbricata, um, some of the aeoniums, some of the kalanchoes, 
and a whole lot of plants that really thrive here in Melbourne. And of course, apart from that, I also have to cater to the more serious collectors, those who are willing to spend five, ten dollars per plant. I think that would be the bulk of my of my stock that I would be bringing there. And lastly, I might also have to bring some of the more exotic plants, those that I would be selling for over ten dollars, and probably even some even some arrangements. The problem with arrangements is that the, the base cost, the materials cost is really high. This is a 25 centimeter bowl and this costed me $17 just for the bowl and this plant, this is, a, this is an Echeveria Orion, this is almost two years. Well, I've grown this for almost two years now. For, at this size, I don't think I'll be willing to sell this for any less than $25. It's quite a mature plant maybe even 30 so the plant plus the pot that would be close to 50 dollars i need to make a little profit margin there so 50 dollars it is i would not be selling this for no for any less than 50 dollars this would also cover the costs of the the soil mix and the top dressing so what i'm really saying is that going for arrangements would be less profitable than selling individual plants the thing about arrangements though is that this appeals to a more wide audience so maybe i should do arrangements composed of cheaper plants or more common plants i should go for bowls in the range of 30 to 35 i think that would be decent i might be able to whip something up but i'll be thinking about that over the next few days or next few weeks i'm still not sure if i want to use these bowls this might not appeal to everyone so maybe I'll have a look at some of my pots, including those that I brought to the show. Because maybe, maybe I could get rid of some of them. But I'm definitely not selling Orion, no way man. Unless you buy it for 100 So that is the game plan. I would have plants in the range of 2 to $3 for the initiates, for the, the muggles. <laughs> then the buck would be in the range of 5 to $10. That would be mostly the young plants, the propagations that I made. And for the more exotic plants, the plants that are, you know, things that you would not usually see being sold in Bunnings or in uh, large garden centers, collector's items basically, I would be selling them for over $10. I think, I think that's a good plan. I'd also be selling some arrangement. I'll have to look for some cheap pots, pots that are smaller than the 25 bowl. I shown you just now yeah i think being able to target across the board in terms of collector level would be good so now that i'm thinking about it i might i haven't really confirmed the size of the table that i'd be taking i have the option of taking half a table or a, an entire table i think at this stage i should take a whole table that way i have more space for all my plants and i could even bring some bring some of my bring some plants for display but in terms of display i think some people would be interested in those as well so i should really be bringing plants that are display plants that i might still be willing to part with you know again definitely not my orion but just as a thought i have a lot of these aeonium short black and as you recall this is an award-winning short black i'm not kidding because it won first place in the aeonium novice category back in the succulent show so i could probably bring this one and show the medal or show the ribbon that came with it and i don't know put it up for sale 30 40 dollars maybe someone would be interested award-winning plant <laughs> so that's it that's my game plan i'll be selling some plants in the craft market which is going to be in the second week of december i think i'll have to make sure that i do not exhaust all of the plants that i'll be selling in my online shop because i'm pretty sure a lot of you are waiting for me to release the plants I'll be releasing more information about the craft market as I get more information, as I confirm. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any news about that. And I'll see you in the next episode. I'll be continuing my work on all of my tests, on all of my experiments, propagation experiments. And this will be fun. So I'll see ya. Bye.